confident. Confidence in comfort, not confidence in lack. Confidence in abundance, confidence in joy, confidence in freedom, confidence in being supported, confidence in being loved, confidence in being worthy. And when you cultivate that vibrational state, you will be ready to perceive what you actually wish to perceive. And then you do. And then you enjoy it, and you reap the benefits of your previous thoughts, of your previous vibrational work. And it will be a great moment of celebration. And you will continue to enjoy it for a little, little while, but meantime, you're already working on the next big thing. You'll become vibrationally ambitious, but without all the negative connotations that that word has gotten over the years, such as needing to steal other people's happiness from them in order to attain yours, needing to not have an eye for the fact that sometimes things take a little bit of time to mature. There is a great balanced wisdom in your heart while you are being overly ambitious vibrationally, because you now have gained a taste of the fact that you are the creator. And so, the limitations you previously assumed were there starts to disappear, start to disappear. And when they disappear, you start to remember your dreams. And when you remember your dreams, it'll freak you out. Exactly, because what I'm telling you is that whatever you dream of is already in your field, and it's not only possible for you, but it's highly, highly probable for you if you match that vibration. So that should freak you out a little bit, because I know that all of you have dreams that are quite unlike you have created your physical reality to be at this time. Don't worry, don't freak out too much. Just freak out a little bit. Just like, oh, whoa, yay, <laughs> uh, <yeah>. exciting. <laughs> Let it get you activated. Let it get you excited. Let it baffle your mind. So wait, that is actually, I'm actually meant to perceive that someday? Scary, but awesome. It's a little intimidating, but only if I include all the lack that I've created for myself thus, thus far. But if I don't do that, then it's just an exciting dream and I can already enjoy the state of it without it ever having to be made manifest. And when you're in that vibrational state of pulling into the here and now feeling whatever you think you desire and feeling it here and now without inducing, oh, but it's not here now, but actually feeling the here and nowness of that dream, it's the quickest way to pull it into your experience. And it's the quickest way to show yourself where you contract when you think of that. Oh, but if I do have it, oh, I wouldn't quite be able to handle this. Or, oh, I don't think I'd be worthy of this much power or love or abundance or wealth or freedom. And so you work on yourself until you are at a consistent frequency where you feel that that vibrational reality is already here and it no longer freaks you out and it feels consistent and it feels like it's your new baseline and you start dreaming about the very next thing and then the previous thing that served as a symbol for growth now effortlessly enters your, your experience and you are no longer putting it off. You are no longer postponing that creation. You are no longer afraid of it. You are no longer believing you're unworthy of so much enjoyment. There's nothing in creation that suggests you should not be in joy all the time, except the people you don't want to end up like. So it's a great thing. Again, if the people you don't want to end up like would say that joy was the best thing and you deserve it, you should be concerned. But since they continue to say everything requires hard work, everything requires pain in order to have a little bit of gain. We're filled with sin. We're not worthy of love and support and the dreams that we have. These things are not realistic. That's what the people you don't want to end up like keep telling themselves and you. So that's a great sign. It means that the opposite is actually more true. So take other people's doubt or believe in a realistic <laughs> Newtonian, linear, limited, lacking, unworthy reality, and take that as a great sign for the fact that the truth of creation is quite the opposite. You are already worthy of everything you desire. This is another great way to ease yourself into ease, and then ease yourself into excitement, and then ease yourself into ecstasy or bliss. Start where you're at. Slow down the negative spiral in whatever way you can until you reach a neutral point of ease. And then from ease, it's that much easier to catch the upward spiraling train of thought, belief, conviction, energy. And then you'll be right back in alignment, attracting a future of your dreams, attracting the future self that you are here to embody. Don't be so human. Don't be so human. It's not relevant anymore. It's not exciting anymore. Get over being so human. It hasn't served anyone ever to be extremely human. Then what am I? 
You are endless consciousness having a vibratory experience. That's all you are. The physical shell you've projected yourself through is nothing but a manifestation of the vibration that you have assumed. Change the vibration and your expression, your vehicular expression of self within this world, which is also inside of your consciousness, by the way, will change. It will start to change how it feels, how it looks, how it thinks about itself, how it operates, how it interacts, how it, <sighs> how it uses gestures when it speaks, how it uses its voice, everything. Everything starts to become more and more under your control. The way you express yourself becomes yours, not random and automatic and erratic. You become the full expression of your controlling self. Controlling what? Controlling vibration. Controlling situation? Nope. Just vibration. Again, as soon as you fall into the trap of believing you should control your environment, you're already giving away your power to something that has no power to create the future. And remember, the only reason you ever try to control what is, is because you believe it will lead into a better future. There's no other reason to control what is, unless you believe it will turn into a better thing, a less lacking creation. Now that you know that the next creation does never takes its cue from what is visible now, you can safely let go of situational control and rest in the pure bliss of knowing that you are a vibrational creator and that the future will shape itself around you. You don't have to go out of your way. You don't have to move a single inch, a single finger to attract the life of your dreams. You could hypothetically sit in this chair for the next two years, attract people that want to feed you. It might help to grow a beard and a mala and speak some wisdom every once in a while and say that you're a saint from the future. But other than that, let's say you attract that to yourself. You can attract the life of your dreams. By simply sitting here, not moving a finger. Why? Because creation does not base itself off of creation. The future has nothing to do with the now, except how you feel about the now. That's what creates the future. So if you were to sit here in bliss and effortless abundance and total conviction in the union, infinite state of being, and you are not afraid to imagine, you are not afraid to create on the mental level and to be excited about what you see and to only pull into your vision things that excite you and that are a representation of that abundance, you will bring that into your experience without having to do any physical work. I'm not saying physical work is a bad thing, but let your physical work be only utilized to pluck the fruits that have grown out of your previous mental creations. So what is the physical body meant to do? Is it meant to do hard work? No, it is created to enjoy on a physical level the non-physical thoughts you've been having. That on a non-physical level you could not enjoy physically. You could only enjoy as physically as non-physical reality allows you to enjoy. Which is very high vibrationally and very intense, but it's a different type of feeling than the experience of the physical illusion. And so you decided, well, why not? project a portion of my consciousness into this physical illusory plane of consciousness so that I can not only enjoy everything on the mental instantaneous plane, but I can also give it the illusion of time and therefore give myself this trajectory of vibrational growth, of not having instantaneously what I think of, but having there be a little bit of time between where I am and where I want to be before I pull it into my full-blown experience. And then when I continue to think the thoughts that I desire that are in alignment with the truth of my abundant soul and my generous soul, infinitely giving, infinitely of service, but also very generous to itself, also very selfish in that it wants joy and expansion in that way. And so having thoughts align with the vision of my true self, it will bring into my reality opportunities that are reflective of that. And suddenly I'll recognize it. Hey, two weeks ago, I sat down and for 10 minutes I imagined this. Or even for a split second when someone was talking to me. I thought, randomly almost, wouldn't it be nice if this or that occurred someday? And I completely forgot about it. And here it is. Now let me receive the fruits of my thoughts and enjoy. Consume your creations. That's all the physical being is meant to do. Enjoy the physicality that are reflective of its previous foregoing mental creations. But make no mistake, you don't create by physical work, you create by mental imagination. You create by non-physical intention, imagination, vibrational receiving of who you are. That's how you attract future to yourself. You don't do it through physical work. 
Physical work is only meant to enjoy the fruits of your previous thoughts. So ease your way into ease, and then ease your way into bliss, to the best of your ability, over and over and over and over and over again. And you will find more and more perspectives of how valuable you are. You will find access to more and more ways of seeing life that are in alignment with the Creator, that are abundant, that are self-loving, that are self-giving, that are self-enjoyable, and also other giving and other enjoyable, because you see in that high vibrational state that all is yourself, and your entire environment is your body and your beingness. And so there is no more distinction between other selves and yours, yourself. You are one self. And so the best way to give to all of yourself is to be in ecstasy, to have access to high vibrational, wise, interconnected thoughts that are of benefit to everyone, to all that is. You can only do that through joy, not through depression. So make it a priority to feel really amazing. Develop the habit to find and surge and dig for the perspectives that make you feel great about who you are. Do that over and over and over again until you've carved out all negative thoughts about yourself and all you perceive is that you are the creator in form and that you receive and perceive and are worthy of everything you desire because there is no other law than worthiness. There is no other being but you, the one. So there is no disharmony between what it desires and what it creates and what it deserves. You deserve everything you desire and more. Over and over again until you got it. Until you have moved up your baseline significantly. And then you move it up again. And then you move it up again. And before you know it, you won't be able to recognize yourself. And that's a good thing. Because you don't want to end up like you either. So don't take your own advice. Seek for new advice, new perspectives that resonate, that ring true, that fill you with joy and excitement. Okay? That's how you activate the future of your dreams. There's no other way. You, can get to, you cannot get to a positive reality from a negative state. So resolve all lack, beliefs, as much as you can. And from the abundance perspectives, you will then match the vibration of a reality that's already here, that's already abundant. You already know it exists, otherwise you couldn't dream of it. You can only dream of something that already exists within your field. Duh. You cannot perceive something that's not already within your field. Duh. So, if you have a desire about something, it must already be in your field, and it must already be worthy of you, and you must already be worthy of it. Duh. No? It's so obvious. You cannot imagine what you're not deserving, worthy, or capable of. The more you see that, the more that becomes your truth, and then the more you see it, reflect that you know it.